Uh, I'm going to be ta drilling down on a single vineyard in a 500 acre property. The vineyard is about 33 hectares and it's roughly 1.6 by 1 kilometer uh, in its dimensions with intervening non-planted areas. My associate in this talk, my junior associate, is now listed on the other side there. <laughs> uh, here we are in McMinnville, and here is Abacella. It's about 160 miles to you Americans, uh, 270 kilometers roughly. So if you get a chance, come down and take a look. Uh, this is the Umpqua Valley AVA, an AVA established uh, when America began the process in 1983, established the next year. So it's been around a long time. It was the birthplace of the modern Oregon wine industry. My talk today is going to go just a little bit slower than this outline I'm showing you. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, introduce the vineyard. This is in the horizontal axis is the 1.6 uh, is the 1.6 meter and the vertical is the one meter axis. Uh, original plantings in this area. And we're blessed with a fault line. Many areas in Oregon have a fault line. Many areas of the world do. This one is some 250 mil million years older than the terrain to the north. You'll hear more about that in a moment. First, I'm going to show you just a series of pictures to give you the idea of our slope, our landscapes, our aspects. I think you get the idea that we have steep terrain. You can't quite see the fruit load in that uh, basket. But if it were a better picture, you probably could. This is our general location, southwest corner of Oregon. And we're astride a fault line, as you saw earlier. Hence the name of our vineyard, Fault Line Vineyards. Uh, someone here in the audience provided these to me, very indirectly, by a geological survey that was done in the 90s that was published just after I planted my second vineyard in maybe I would have made the alleyways different had I have known. Ray, are you here? Thanks. <laughs> this is Abasola's location, quite by chance. The ancient Klamath terrain, the youthful coastal range, and then the more recent Western uh, Cascade Arc. And you did a beautiful cross section for me. It was actually 265 meters east of my property, but thanks anyway. Uh, there we are astride uh, the uh, Old Klamath and the Youthful Coastal Range. This is a picture taken in the fall of the year, November 2012, and has a lot of color that's reflective of the different soil types, different varieties, different rootstocks different watering conditions of the vines that year. It's really uh, a beautiful picture. Uh, our vineyards uh, were established in 1995. They have a very intermediate climate. We have that seven month growing season that uh, Greg just mentioned. We have those wide diurnal temperature swings, sometimes as much as 60 degrees Fahrenheit in a day. Uh, we don't get a lot of growing season precipitation. Our elevation from the... I hit the middle part. Okay, I'll, I just won't use it anymore. Uh, we have a 60, a 90 kilometer rise from the top to the bottom of our vineyard vertically. We astride that fault line that I've mentioned. Uh, we have a highly mixed geology. Uh, we have five distinct USDA soils and 33 hectares of a wide range of vines. Uh, my objectives here were simply, uh, we had some experience collecting weather data in our original planting starting in 1993. We collected data 
in a new location on the other side of the fault line at a much higher elevation and noticed that there was tremendous differences. And we began to exploit those differences to try different grape uh, trials, thinking what their needs were in their native land in Europe. Uh, so that was our goal, to define the within vineyard struct temperature structure. We did this using a relatively inexpensive Hubble data logger. You can get them to log different things. These logged only temperature. Uh, we placed them in the vine row at 1.5 meters roughly. Uh, some of you may recognize this gentleman. He's an intern at our uh, winery now, and he's just under six feet tall, and just off his left ear is this. That's the hobo sensor. So we're measuring top of canopy temperature, not a true weather station temperature. This shows the locations of the various hobo sensors. I, I don't try to pay great attention to that, but they represent all the slopes, aspects, and elevations in a very general way. We've recorded uh, the data continuously, and they're still recording, and I'm presenting the five years worth uh, that you see there. This is that data. How do we distill that down so we can talk about it quickly? Growing degree days differ by about 300 units from the warmest to the coolest area. These are centigrade numbers. Uh, the days over 35 are much more in the, in the southern sloped areas as they are to the northern sloped areas. But the uh, T mins very, very little. If you look at this statistically, the steeper slopes with the most southerly aspects were the warmest, of course. And lower elevations with northerly aspects uh, had significantly greater frost risk. Now, let's take that one day at a time, one month at a time, and one year at a time. This is one day. This was before this study, but it's, it's well documented, well studied, and so I chose to use this. You can see that um, uh, the red line is in the warmer south slope, higher elevation. The blue line is a cooler spot. And in that particular day, we got 56% more growing degree days in the Celsius or the Fahrenheit system than we did at the other site. Those sites are less than a kilometer apart. For the year, it only was 12% more because in 2006, we had a rather cloudy autumn, which obscured that extra sun that would have been coming in to push those temperatures more like the day or the month were. So to summarize here, our hobo, da hobo data, our warmest mesoclimes are not surprisingly uh, on south, steep south slopes. Our coolest mesoclimes are on north, northeast slopes. I should point out that the distance from here to here is 250 meters. The rest of the terrain is bathed in a climate envelope that's fairly typical for my region and is defined by the Cascades and Coastal Range uh, and limited uh, to just a little bit north of Roseburg where the AVA begins. So to my final conclusions, uh, I think it's uh, worth monitoring growing degree days at the micro terroir level because they have a great impact on vine physiology, what you can plant, what you can expect. On our steep south slopes, we can ripen these grapes well. On our northern slopes, we can ripen Albarino where it retains uh, character. And to do that within a small property requires that you know your micro terroir from a climate point of view as well as your soils. In the intermediate lands, which is what I came to Oregon to do, we grow Tempranillo and some other grapes. Thank you very much.